Okay, so uh, we continue now. Um, so first as a reminder, so this morning we arrive at this uh, at this yeah, you just have to suppress and wait for a second. I think. Okay, so um, yeah, so this morning I I was uh, after discussing the. Um, uh, Poincaré transformations and so on, and uh, I show that uh, I mean that if you take this uh, commutator for the for generic scalar theory in in one express in terms of uh, like um, in the front form, so meaning with evolution on along the e plus uh, direction, uh, then you can indeed get. Um, a consistent quantum formulation of uh, of this of, of the scalar theory with um, Lorentz transformations and, and translations uh, properly encoded at quantum level via this um, commutation relations here of the generators with a with a field uh, and indeed like the in that case also this um, generators would uh, would obey the the Poincaré algebra. And we would get the proper um, uh, evolution equation for the uh, for the scalar field here. Okay, so um, yeah, so this quantum equation of motion here for the scalar field. <clears throat> so now, uh, what what do we do next? So. Um, here, okay, yeah, I will show how we can actually construct uh, and study like the construction of, of Fox space. Um, really, at on each uh, slice of, uh, of on each hypersurface of constant uh, x plus. So, okay, just for to be a bit more specific, I will consider that okay, like the like so yeah, so far I, I didn't specify anything for the for the scalar potential, but here I assume that. Basically, the theory is well behaved, so that there is a, um, I mean, yeah, so that, that, that at that classical level, there is a, a, a unique and stable minimum here. So, really, to get the most simplest uh, scalar theory possible, yes, but non trivial. So, even here, if we take that the second derivative is strictly positive, it's even that there is even a, a mass gap here. So, okay. Um, and okay, so now for that we have um, we have at the commutation relations and so on for the for the field and and actually yeah that was commutation relations at uh, uh, at at, at uh, fixed uh, x plus. So so now um, we we can just introduce this. Um, these operators here, a and, and a dagger, which that what we construct just by in such a way from the from the from the quantum field at a at a given uh, on on such a constant x plus uh, hypersurface. Uh, yeah, okay. Just for to specify the notations here, when I have some, I mean, okay. Well, when there is a bold character, it means usually the transverse um, transverse vector. And here with the underline here, I mean that it would be kind of a three vector, but uh, containing both the plus and the perp uh, coordinates here. So here, when you see like this underline k dot x, it means that there is okay like there, there is like the term uh, k minus x plus is absent basically from from here. So this is basically a Fourier transform along the like from uh, x like from x perp to k perp and from x minus to to k plus. Okay, to this derivative, but then we leave the the x plus dependence there, 
and because okay here we we, we want to to stay here at a at a fixed x plus like really to to study what what the theory how the theory looks on on such a fixed x plus hypersurface uh, okay so then because of that we have this uh, a and a dagger uh, operator here which depend on k plus k perp and x plus so here we can actually also invert that and okay and write the the quantum field here uh in in such a way here so with this uh, a and a dagger operator and and by using the the equal uh, x plus commutation relation for the field i i, I discussed uh, earlier like which was involving this uh, sign function and, and so on and and this uh, expressions here for the a and a dagger operator we can find the, the commutation relation here and and that's really the typical uh, commutation relation you, you expect for um, for annihilation and creation operators uh, okay with normalization with k plus here okay that's just a detail here um okay so yeah and, and then if you go further and and calculate the computation relation of this uh, uh with like p plus or p p perp and like, like the transverse component or the, or the plus component of the, of the momentum operators and you you find such um, such result here so in so yeah so here i excluded the, the minus component here um, because that would be a more complicated result but for the kinematic components of uh, of p mu which do not depend on direction so p plus and, and p p j or p curve that's what we get here and so it means that uh like so, so the here basically it it, it um further uh, and gives further hint of the interpretation of this a and a dagger as a annihilation annihilation and creation operator because basically when you so so this relation tells you that when you act with a on a on a given state uh so the basically a will uh, will lower the I mean will lower the the the, the plus momentum of, uh, of of the state by by k plus so it will remove the k plus and okay and change the k perp as well okay uh, and was a dagger will uh, will add k plus so so it's really uh, okay removing or adding a, a quantum uh, with, with uh, momentum k plus and k perp uh, on the on the state it, it acts on um, <clears throat> Yeah, okay. Uh, so this okay is not really necessary. I just wrote the mutation relation on other uh, generators as well, other pneumatic generators. But okay, now okay, we have this um, these operators here, which looks like annihilation and creation operators, but we need to discuss a bit on what they act. And in particular, if there is a way to understand uh, what would be the, the vacuum, so the grand state of the, of the theory. So, I mean, in general, in order to have a, in, in a consistent uh, QFT, we uh, we need, uh, I mean, in order to be to have a stable uh, and well-defined theory, we, it would need to have a spectrum bounded from below. So there might be one or, or several ground states. Uh, and so typically there is a minimal uh, energy of the theory which okay like in in the standard uh, instant form uh, formulation with evolution uh, uh, described along the, along the time like direction uh, x zero so then the, the energy would be uh, would be uh, p zero so there would be a, a minimal 
value of, uh, of P0. So any state will have either this value or, or larger. And typically the such vacuum, like state of minimal energy, that would have also a vanishing space momentum. Because, okay, if you add momentum, usually it's, uh, it adds uh, as well uh, energy. Uh, okay. So, yeah, but, but this, okay, the thing is that here, this is a minimal energy of, uh, of the P0. And, and in this, uh, and, and, and okay, like when we think of the evolution as being along x0, yeah, then the, this P, P0, like the P0 operator is a, is a dynamic operator. So depending on the, on, on the interaction, so obviously like energy, you, you know, it, it has to uh, depend on the, on the interactions and so on. So that's why it's, it's complicated to, in general, to, to study the, the vacuum, because we need to know also the interactions. We kind of need to, to solve the whole theory to in order to even write down, I mean, to, to understand what is the, the vacuum somehow. Um, okay. And so in, in general, okay, if you consider that you, you, you have the vacuum, but then for the state, like for the, for example, you would have some, uh, minimal excitations around the around the vacuum. So, you, so this you can think of this uh, excitation that that will carry some uh, extra momentum k and extra energy k zero. And then, okay, in principle, this um, you you would like the extra this this extra fluctuation on top of the vacuum to to have both that the k mu k mu would be positive. So. Because if not, that would be a, if not this fluctuation would be a vacuum, and so that would mean that you are you are looking at excitation about some around some unstable state. So it's not uh, really uh, so you are not really considering a, a well defined theory and so on. So, so okay, you really want this KMU KMU to be positive, and also you want the energy to be like the extra energy of the fluctuation to be positive, just to so that the fluctuation is a fluctuation above the, the vacuum. So excited state compared to the vacuum, so it's a larger uh, energy. <clears throat> so that would be the, the case in, again, if you, if you think in terms of instant form, so with evolution along x0. But now if you think in terms of trans form, so with evolution along x plus, then if you try to look what this uh, two condition imply, so positive uh, k mu k mu and positive k0, like together that would imply that you have simultaneously positive k plus and positive k minus and and now that's actually one one thing very interesting because the k minus is here like like the like the p minus operator is uh, like is uh, dynamical operator like like would be the, the p0 in, uh, in the other case but now we have the p plus operator which uh, which is kinematic so now we have a, a kinematic generator uh, uh, which uh, uh, well here we, we we have also some uh, some some lower bound here so so if you think okay like now, if you consider a theory with a, with a mass gap, so for that should be the, the clearest uh, case here. So if you have a, a, the vacuum and you consider this excitation about the vacuum, now, okay, this k mu k mu should not only be positive, but should, should be larger or equal than the mass gap. So we can rewrite this thing like this. And then the k per square, okay, that's uh, that would be positive. So. Anyway, I mean, basically what it means that you would have a finite lower bound on this K plus K minus, on this product K plus K minus. And, and now it means that excitation uh, above the vacuum would have a finite product of this uh, K plus K minus, like positive and finite. And the thing is that if you, if you want to, to look for 
a case where either the k plus or the k minus goes to zero and satisfies this bound, then the other one has to be infinite. So, so uh, on by contrast, yes, okay. So you, you see that uh, if you impose that both of them should be finite, then they none of them can reach uh, zero. So you are always uh, always above uh, always above that. Yes. So. So here, um, you you use okay. Uh, um, yes. So so now basically, uh, for okay. For, for, so because of that, in a theory with a mass gap. Um, okay, like the the vacuum would be a state. Uh, okay, like before we were saying, okay, it was a state with with a minimal um, a p zero. But now, because of that, it's a state of both. Uh, I mean, it it has minimal p plus. I mean, it has minimal p minus and minimal p plus. And actually, one of them is, uh, I mean, it's sufficient to say minimum P minus. Okay, that would be, that will give you the, the vacuum in, in, that, in the case of mass gap. Or you say, okay, minimal P plus, and that's again sufficient in such a case because uh, so that state would be, I mean, here that would be unique. I mean, you cannot, uh, cannot avoid that. <coughs> and, and the thing that now, okay, P plus is a uh, since P plus is is uh, kinematic, it means that it's independent of the interaction. So it means that you can now have a criterion on finding the, the vacuum. Like okay, it's a state of minimal P plus. That P plus is independent of interactions. So you can find the vacuum even without talking about interactions somehow. Um, and in particular, okay, we had this uh, operator uh, A that we reconstructed from the field, which was lowering the, the P plus of the state they act on. So we, we mean that if it, if you act on a state of minimum P plus, like the vacuum, I mean, basically the vacuum, it will, uh, it, it, it will just, uh, I mean, it, you cannot lower it further because that's the minimum, so, you, so it will annihilate it. So, uh, because of that, we have this criterion that if you have a state which is annihilated by uh, by this operator, then it has to be the, the vacuum. And okay, so here we construct that, that from the um, uh, yeah. So, so 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 here we have not even this we have not discussed at all about uh, about interactions here. And further here it was here so far we were again. Uh, we, we constructed this uh, annihilation operator uh, from the, the field at a, at a fixed uh, x plus. So in a way, so far we can think of that as a vacuum state uh, at uh, at some given x plus. So uh, okay. Yeah, okay. And okay, well, then we have also the creation operator. So we can, once we have the, this, once we have defined the vacuum state like this, you can always um, act with creation operator instead. And then that would generate other, other states or so excited state above the, the vacuum. And, and okay, you can start to, to construct a hot space like this. Yes. And okay, choose the state to be analyzed. Yes. Um, and yeah, okay. Then the vacuum is totally independent of the interaction. In, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's mm -hmm. actually the main, uh, like, uh, 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 gigantic difference between the between right form quantization and uh, and the standard uh, in some form quantization, where in that case you well, the, you have the, the true vacuum of the theory, which would be completely dependent on the on the interaction, and you would have really to, to solve the, the theory to fully specify the vacuum. Whereas here, somehow, 
because of this, it's just because of this, uh, of the fact that you have the peak loss operator, I mean, that, that you have, okay, so you can find some bounds like this on the, on the peak loss. Uh, because of that, uh, you, you are able to, okay, to find a criterion like this where, where you don't have, uh, where you don't really play with interactions anymore. And it's, and yeah, so let's put it in, what I wanted to say here. Yes, yes, yeah. So, so it, it's really that if, if you think in terms of, uh, instant form uh, of, the, of the evolution, so along x plus. On the one hand, you have uh, the p zero, which is uh, which is dynamical, so it depends on interactions, and it is the one that should be minimal to get the vacuum. But okay, it depends on interactions, so it's complicated. And on the other hand, you have like the space translation operator, like this uh, p p one, p two, p three. Uh, so these guys are independent of interaction, but then they are not bound. You can have a, a, a momentum in any space direction, uh, which should be positive or negative, okay, no problem. So that doesn't uh, tell you anything about if it's, uh, I mean, if it's, it's not something where you, you would have a bond like this was in, in here in, in terms of uh, light fronts. Uh, in that case, yes, we have this P plus, which, uh, we, okay. Which where you, you have uh, such kind of uh, restriction here. So actually, yeah, uh, just a remark: if you have a series with a mass gap, um, you you would have uh, a unit state of uh, minimal p plus that would be the, the vacuum. If you have uh, no no mass gap, basically here you would replace this by a zero, so this product would be positive. So in that case, you you could get uh, k plus go to zero. I mean, basically the vacuum would still require to have, uh, I mean, to get minimal k plus. So basically this excitation should have zero k plus, but that would not be sufficient. So, so that would be a necessary condition, but not a sufficient condition to, 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 to specify the, the vacuum, yes. So, so here in this discussion, I think a mass gap makes this thing clearer than in a theory where you have a, okay. Uh, yeah, no mass gap, so basically uh, you have degenerate vacua and so on. But okay, we, you, you would still have a criterion that, okay, vacuum needs to, to, to still be a state of uh, minimal, uh, minimal uh, P plus. Yeah, and so, um, so here now, uh, I'd just like to discuss uh, a bit further some um, some property related to the to the vacuum and also to the to the Poincaré generators. Once we write them in terms of the creation and initial operator instead of the instead of the field. So so far we had expression in terms of the field, and now just since uh, the the field now is, uh, we have this uh, kind of Fourier decomposition here, I mean, partial Fourier decomposition, we still have this plus, but we can insert uh, that to, to, to express, uh, to replace the field in, by A and A dagger. So if we first want to, to discuss uh, P plus momentum, like a momentum operator. So it has a corresponding uh, density for P plus would be P plus plus. And the, 
So that would, what I was, we already showed this morning, that was this uh, product, yes, of uh, minus derivative of the field. So now if I insert the expression for the, for the field here, in terms of A and A dagger, I, I would have, okay, two terms in each case. So yeah, I, yeah, I have the phase space integration for, for both and, and now, then, okay, like I have two times two terms, so that's four terms here. Uh, and because of the minus derivative here, I get k plus of uh, of each guy. So one is k plus and one is k prime plus here. And then I have product of of two a or a dagger and the and the corresponding phases. So I have a term with where I pick a in in both cases, then a dagger a a a dagger and a dagger a dagger. Um, and here, one one thing which is uh, very very convenient and useful is to 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 have operators which are in the so-called uh, normal order or normal order, meaning that all the a are on the uh, right and all the a dagger are on the left. So in that case, okay, if they are only a or a dagger, there is no problem. So here, this guy a dagger a is also already in the normal order. There is only this guy which is not in the normal order. So if I want to to see how how this um, differ from its normal order version that I write with two dots here, uh, that would just be like the difference between the two, and like the normal order would be the same, but with uh, a with this to the to the right of this guy, so that's just the commutator. So, like the difference between the two is just uh, this term here, but I replace this by the the commutator here. So then, from the commutation relation that I just wrote before, that was a start, kind of standard uh, commutation relation where, between the a and the a dagger. So that will give me a, a three dimensional uh, delta. In the plus and per components, and and also there will be a two two k plus in the normalization. So that basically allow to to remove completely uh, this this uh, space uh, measure, for example. Uh, and as well, since the k and k prime will be the same, also this phase will uh, will drop. That will become trivial here. So just okay, I get one one integration left, and then the k plus and k prime plus becomes the same. So it's k plus square. So here I just rewrite explicitly like separating the, the perp and the plus component. So okay, so we see in principle we have the the quantum uh, version of this uh, plus plus component of the uh, uh, momentum tensor, which uh, which is given here and. Uh, it's almost the same as uh, as its normal order version up to this uh, extra piece, which now is, uh, this one is, uh, okay, like this one and this one are operators, so they contain A and A dagger, yeah. well, this one is just, uh, just a number, so it's, it's, it's a number uh, contribution here. And if you look at this, uh, this and you, okay, let's like, want to calculate it, okay, like at this stage, it looks a bit nasty because, okay, uh, basically, everything is uh, UV divergent here. So this is uh, so if you look at the transverse integral, okay, it's just a pure uh, quadratic divergence. And here, okay, you have dk plus, where you k plus down and k plus here. So it's like a dk plus k plus, uh, and with the theta, so it's integrated from zero to infinity. So so that would be uh, that would be again uh, okay. So actually, yeah, okay, that would be. Uh, yeah, it's supporting now, but okay, that's uh, quadratic, yes. But uh, I mean, it's all, uh, that, that would be really badly UV divergence. And um, uh, okay, and, and basically you would need to, to introduce uh, regulators and so on, so yeah. Uh, one thing that is very often used in, in like from perturbation theory calculation is to, to introduce, to regulate the transverse integral with a basically transverse version of the beam rate. So just write integ this integration in, uh, in D minus two dimensions instead of, instead of two. And in that case, in, in dim rate, such kind of uh, trivial uh, integration is, uh, is taken to be identically zero. So here that 
might tell you that this guy is zero, but still that would be uh, zero times something uh, badly divergent. So it's uh, not not very nice and, and a bit, um, it looks very uh, strongly regularization dependent. So it's not, not nice. But okay, one thing is that to notice is that here's a, the query that, okay, we have something which require UV regularization, but we, since it's completely factorized between the PERP and the plus components, it's like the regularization of both uh, integrals are kind of uh, se separate. So, so, so it's hard to, to make this regularization of both integral in a, in a fully, I mean, without breaking uh, Poincare invariance. Because okay, like just the integrals are, are separate, so we need a kind of different regularization for for both uh, at this stage. But okay, in, instead, one one nice way to to regulate to regularize this in is okay. This guy, if you if you think about it, it's it's just what you get when you have so up to the k up to the k plus square, but all the rest here is when you have the um, uh, one particular once invariant phase space, which okay would be here without the k plus, and you integrate over over k minus, uh, you would get something like this. Yes. So here I, I do the I undo that uh, that k minus integration to write things like this, except that now okay I can have a mass. Uh, Okay, it could be the mass of your, your scalar field, or, or actually, okay, or it could be just some arbitrary scale here. I, I don't really have any problem with that. So it's just a scale that you can have here. So I just rewrite this, uh, okay, in such a way. And now I can perform, uh, I can apply dimensional regulation in the, in the full uh, in the full momentum uh, space, so including perp n plus n minus directions. So, okay, we have. We now have we written in this extra constant piece in, in, in such a way here, what now the k plus. And how to, to calculate that? Actually, the, the nicest way to, to do it is just instead of looking at that, look at the same, but with instead of k plus square, look at k, k mu, k mu. And now this guy is, uh, I mean, just by, by by Lorentz covariance, you have something with two indices and, and the rest uh, have no, no preferred direction. Uh, okay, so there is, yeah, okay, so it's just a sign, so it's not, um, so this is fine. Uh, basically, the only thing you can get is that would be proportional to, to G mu nu, so to, to the metric. So basically you, you have the usual kind of um, symmetry reduction that the k mu k mu uh, would be the metric uh, times the k square and then you have the dimension d here in order to 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 maintain the normalization here so you can check that by just applying the, the metric here that would give you k square and here that would give you d like uh, with a g mu mu g mu mu so that's why you have this one over d and then once you have this uh, here you have k square so that k square is m square so you can just take it out so you have this and now we have plus this, which is just a integral of the one particular phase, phase space. So this is in dim reg. Okay, it's a bit uh, okay. It's some some dim reg calculation that okay is possible to do, and uh, and typically it's better to do it uh, more using uh, Cartesian coordinates here instead of light cone because if not, we are back to the to this kind of uh, point uh, where it's a bit. Uh, and clear what's going on. So instead of use Cartesian coordinates, you may eventually arrive at such kind of expression. But now, okay, we look at this, we have this result, and we compare to that. So what we wanted is here's a case where mu and mu are plus, we have k plus square. So now if we take this and we put mu and mu to be plus, what we have is that we have some result here, some well-defined answer. And then here is a metric, which now would be G plus plus, but G plus plus and yeah, in like one coordinate is identically zero. So basically it tells you that if you use really uh, nicely uh, Poincaré covariant uh, UV regularization here, this extra term here is actually identically zero, which was not so clear uh, before, I mean, yeah. 
So because of that, since the extra term is identically zero, it means that actually T plus plus is, uh, I mean, is the same as its normal order version. So there is no, no further contribution. So we can uh, write it to be, uh, so now it is equal to the, to the normal order version. So now I rewrote the, the expression here, but now this time I, I put the, the A and A dagger in the normal order. So now I have A, A, A dagger, A, A dagger, A, and A dagger, A dagger. So now, um, Here. Oh, actually, there is a problem here. Ah, no, no, sorry. Yeah, so here it was. Uh, so I was rewriting the T plus plus, but I also make the integration over X minus and, and X perp. So then we are, before there was, there were like in T plus plus, there was phases, but now by integrating over X minus and X perp, I get this. Uh, Three dimensional delta here for each term, and some come with uh, k plus k prime, and some with k minus k prime. So this is both in the transverse and plus uh, and plus directions. So interestingly, here if you look at this, you will have term like like the a a and the a dagger a dagger terms. They come with a plus, so meaning that it contain a term like it contain a delta like delta of k plus plus k prime plus. So that means that k plus and k prime plus have to be opposite to each other. But then we have also this heavy side function here, which tells you that they are both to be positive. So uh, they cannot be both positive and opposite to each other. Right? At least, okay, that would have to be all zero, but then that would be something of uh, measure zero, so that would not uh, contribute to the integration. Mm -hmm. And so basically here, it means that this whole uh, a, a and a dagger, a dagger would uh, completely drop from the, from the p plus here. And you get only this a dagger a, a dagger contribution here, which are actually equal when you evaluate them. So you get that with the factor two, which will cancel this. And, and so, okay, here we get the final expression for the P plus uh, operator. So the generator of uh, translation along the X minus direction, which is, which has a very nice uh, expression in terms of your, of this A and A dagger uh, operator that we have uh, constructed at, uh, on, on the hyper surface of, of uh, constant X plus. Um, and now, since it's uh, contained uh, A operator on the, on the right, now, okay, if we apply this guy, on the vacuum, we would have the A acting on the vacuum, which is uh, which is zero. So now, okay, we see that P plus acting on the on the vacuum is uh, is zero, and there is no and here there was no no approximation, no nothing. So it's it's just uh, I mean the only thing was to to be a bit careful with the UV regularization, but then that's really the, the result. There is nothing that we have thrown away or. Or we have not imposed normal order. It just uh, it was a result of the calculation here, and you get uh, that the vacuum has uh, indeed uh, a zero p plus momentum, which is okay. But it's not so surprising for the for the vacuum. I mean, we expect that it will have no no momentum. So okay, so yeah. And so that means, for example, also that the vacuum is uh, invariant under translation along x minus. So okay, uh, fine. So actually, so the the same kind of uh, study here could be done for the all the other kinematic uh, factor generator, and 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 the situation is quite uh, quite similar. They are all uh, quadratic in the in the field, so we could uh, again introduce. Uh, like expansion of like we like expansion of the p because of a and a dagger, and we would find again that the that there would be normal order up to constant term, which uh, that we found to be vanishing. And when integrating with x minus and its perp, we would uh, 
get that the a a and a dagger a dagger term will will vanish again and we will get only everything will be proportional to I mean, it will contain the a dagger and the a in a, in a normal order for the expression of all the other uh, kinetic point generator as well so which means that again the vacuum uh, that here we have defined from from this operator on a, on a given uh, x plus hyperplane. Uh, so this vacuum is invariant under all the transformations, all the Poincaré transformation, which uh, concerns this, uh, which preserves this uh, x plus uh, this x plus equal constant uh, hyperplane. <coughs> so next thing is to to look at uh, to discuss what's going on with um, uh, with the dynamical generators now. So here to, to be a bit uh, precise now, okay, up to now I was uh, writing the series with the arbitrary potential. So now I will just take uh, pi to the four series with a uh, positive mass pair to get no, no symmetry breaking. So I have basically a pi to the four term here, a mass term quadratic and here, Okay, I can always add a constant, so that so in the in the potential or in the or in the, in the Lagrangian, I can always add constant term. And okay, as long as I don't uh, consider a series with gravity, okay, like this constant term, which you can interpret as a bare cosmological constant, will always disappear from the equation of motion and so on, and, and from all the commutators, and so it will not play. I mean. It will not play in yours, so that's why I can uh, add it uh, anything here. But still, since it's part of the potential, it will appear in the in the C plus minus component of the energy momentum tensor, which, which was containing the, the potential, as I was telling. And so this is, uh, recall that this is, uh, that in, in light from quantization, this is what plays the role of uh, Hamiltonian density. So if you integrate that over X perp and X minus, you 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 get the P minus generator for for translation in, in the X plus direction. So that's what gives you the evolution of the system along X plus. Yes. So then, okay, in in T plus minus, I have terms with a transverse derivative which is which is quadratic. And I have this mass term, which is quadratic. So, so here for the quadratic term, that that there will be the same uh, same story as previously. Uh, I mean, not exactly the same story, but okay. Like we we can write them as their normal order version plus some constant uh, term, which will be associated with okay commutators to okay. Yeah. So, but but that just. Two, two terms effectively. So we have like for each quadratic term, we have like the normal order version plus a, a number, number term, not an operator. Uh, but for here, for such a, for interaction terms, I mean, uh, the situation is a bit more complicated. So here we have a, a phi to the fourth term, so terms which are not quadratic. Uh, here, actually, we don't have only. Um, normal order term or well, normal order version of this thing plus the plus a number, but we have something a bit more complicated. And, and okay, you can either uh, sit down and, and introduce the um, expansion of each of the field and, and, and try to, to make the A and A dagger normal order and in order to recover this and see what you, what you get as, a, as extra terms, or you can basically open a a quantum field theory textbook and, and look at the weak uh, theorem. And here that would be the version of the weak theorem at uh, coincident point here. So you would have, for such a quartic term, you would have the normal order version of it. You would have, again, a, a fully constant term, not, not an operator, but then there will be an extra contribution here, which is kind of mixed, where you would have a normal ordered quadratic operator and some extra, extra const, or some extra um, number valued uh, 
factor here in front with the six, which should be some uh, combinatorial factor, okay. Uh, so, okay, now if we, okay, so, so that, that means that now if we write the quartic term in, in, in the Hamiltonian density in such a way and the quadratic uh, terms as their normal order version plus some, some, some number term. Okay, we also have uh, this lambda zero term, which is an arbitrary constant. So I can basically choose lambda zero here uh, to, in order to cancel all the C number terms that I have and to be left with only operators. And now each of them will be normal ordered. So basically this lambda zero, this bare cosmological constant here, it plays a role of uh, counter term for vacuum energy, if you want, or more precisely for, for the vacuum uh, P minus. Uh, but okay, it's, it, it was completely free, so I can, so it's completely legitimate to do that. So I can, so I arrive at this expression of the, of the Hamiltonian density here, uh, plus minus, in terms of uh, normal ordered uh, operators with no further uh, number, uh, pure number term. And you see, it's not, it's not exactly the same as uh, as just imposing uh, normal ordering on, on this, because there is this extra term which is generated like for any interaction term like quartic or, or cubic uh, could generate uh, extra extra piece in, in such a way. Because here we have just, uh, we have not imposed normal ordering, we have subtracted constant piece. So that's not uh, not exactly the same here. Uh, okay. So now that we have this, uh, everything is written in terms of normal ordered operator. So if we write the, um, write the field in terms of A and A dagger, uh, okay, and we integrate this over uh, X perp and X minus in order to, to get the, what would be the P minus in terms of uh, A and A dagger operator. Again, there will be some terms where there will be only A daggers or only A operators. And for the same reason as before, uh, these guys would, I mean, would be analog of, of this, where there were uh, a sum of uh, K pluses, which would have to be zero, but all the K pluses were positive. So that was not possible. So, so all this term would, would, uh, would drop. And in the end, we would get only terms where there is at least uh, a per uh, a dagger and a. Um, okay, when when we do that, so which means that in in n, of course there are also normal orders. So which means that uh, then we have an expression for p minus, where uh, we would have a bunch of terms here associated with with this, and in each of the term, there will be uh, a dagger on the left and uh, A on the right. So basically when you act with uh, P minus now on the, on the vacuum, you would have all, always, a, a, for each term, there will be an A on the right. So that means that it will annihilate the, the vacuum. So we realize that this P minus now, um, now is annihilating the, the vacuum. So again, here, so you, you, you see, as a result, we see that this, uh, that the vacuum has, um, has zero P minus. And okay, that, but it has zero P minus because we have subtracted somehow. We, are, we have used uh, the lambda zero, like this uh, energy, count, like vacuum energy counter term, if you want to, to make sure that the vacuum has no, no energy, or not no P minus. So this is, uh, okay, not a really, surprising statement somehow. But the thing is that uh, now there are also other uh, dynamic generators. So there, is, there was this guy, this uh, combination of uh, rotation and, and boost, which was dynamical here, which was expressed uh, in terms of this uh, T plus minus. And there is also the, um, the longitudinal Lorentz boost operator, which, uh, which is also dynamical, so which would include the 
t plus minus if uh, we have x plus depends on zero. And since they are expressed in terms of this t plus minus, now we can still use this uh, this expression here in terms of normal ordered operators. And and so because of this, all these uh, dynamical generators actually they would also uh, annihilate the the vacuum here for the same reason. So now. All in all, what we have is that we have shown that for all uh, component of uh, p p mu and, and mu mu, so all the um, generators of uh, Poincaré transformation here, they all annihilate the vacuum. So meaning that the vacuum is fully Poincaré invariant, and so basically that's ten uh, ten relations, ten equations, and in order to get these ten relations, we have only uh, we had only one counter term that we have adjusted in order to, to get this. So it's quite not trivial. Um, <clears throat> okay, but but in the end, the result is uh, is not surprising at all. I mean, in, in a way, that's just uh, the vacuum is uh, is fully Poincaré invariant. The thing is that uh, okay, I mean, again. This is a vacuum here that we have constructed from the from the field, or equivalently from the A and A dagger at a given uh, uh, fixed uh, x plus. But now, uh, since um, the like p minus annihilate the vacuum, and that p minus is associated with translation along x plus, it means that uh, okay that. So the vacuum is invariant by translation on x plus. So basically, it means that it doesn't evolve. So somehow, that's a justification for why the vacuum that we have constructed at a given x plus is actually the same at any x plus. So, so basically, that's the situation now that for um, for any given x plus, we have this vacuum state, and we can. Um, construct a higher fault space by acting with a creation operators here, the A dagger on, on it. So we have one particle, two particle fault space, and, and so on. And that's so that's a fault space fault state construction that we can uh, perform at each x plus. And so we, we for each x plus we would have uh, such kind of uh, fault space. But now. Um, like the fog space at different x plus would be uh, would be actually isomorphic to each other. So that there is by using the on the one hand the, the vacuum would be the same for each x plus, and on the other hand here uh, we we know how the creation operator here would depend on x plus. I mean they just like the evolution with x plus is just uh, given by commutation with uh, with the p minus uh, operator here. So so we see that in principle, the, for example, one particle fault state in at a given x plus are not the same. I mean, or uh, like there will be non-trivial mapping between the excited state between different x plus, but still the, the vacuum will be the same. And, and okay, so yeah, so just like the like the dynamics will uh, will start to mix uh, different uh, excited state, but the vacuum will stay will stay the same at any x plus. Uh, okay, so uh, in in here, in principle, we have, we can make this construction again at any x plus. But it will be uh, very convenient in the in the following to to really focus on like to to space like to yeah to, to use mostly the 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 Fox state at x plus equal zero as a as a reference so as a as a basis for the really for the for the field space of the of the, of the system here. And and I will just uh, use the notation where okay if I don't put any x plus it means that it's taken at x plus equal zero here, but it's still I mean in principle uh, 
creation animation operator at some given k plus k per and x plus, but the x plus happen to be zero here. Uh, okay, so then okay, generic uh, Fox states. I can just uh, so if I okay, we not f and and that would be just a bunch of uh, creation operator a dagger acting on, on the vacuum here with again x plus equals zero implicit here. So that would be a n big n uh, n particle Fox state. <clears throat> and now that we have this uh, fork state, and so they are actually like thanks to the commutation relation of the A and A dagger, so this would form a, a basis. So we can also um, uh, write uh, this representation of the identity as a sum over the, this fork state basis. So this would be the compact uh, version, and then the more explicit version that would, that would be first the vacuum contribution here. And then the excited state contribution, where here we sum over the number of uh, of scalar particles we include in the Fox states, and then we integrate over the the momenta of each uh, of each particle. So we integrate the k plus and the k perp here. And here that's just the the Fox state f here, and and here the the dagger of f essentially. So okay, so that's one. One thing, and okay, if you have this, okay, you can check explicitly that indeed. Uh, so this is this is the composition of the, of the identity. So if you act on different spoke state, it will just uh, just recover it like this. Time. <coughs> and okay, just a remark here uh, for scalar particles. So the in principle, uh, uh, so sc scalars are, are bosons. So there will be some. Uh, from uh, in a free uh, like combinatorial extractor here and here I like in, even in quantum mechanics it's often to often included as a, you put the square root in the in the state but here it's better to include it in the sum so leave the the multi particle uh, fox state uh, defined in this way and then have this um, combinatorial factor one over factorial n uh, as which is sort as part of the of the summation here of the fourth state. That uh, makes some a lot of uh, algebra quite automatic here in terms of uh, combinatorics. So okay, now now we, that we have uh, understood a bit uh, like the stories of uh, fourth state for the. Like for yeah for space for the um, yeah, for the scalar theory, uh, we can try to go on and and understand the like on perturbation theory. So so far, uh, everything was uh, written in the in the Eisenberg picture. So it was the oh, okay. So it was a operator which were having a. Um, uh, non trivial x dependence. So, and, and uh, as I was discussing already from the start this morning, and, and for example, here something, some um, operator which would depend on, on x plus here, it was like, again, like the x plus dependence was uh, encoded by the, um, by the action of the, of the p plus uh, generator here, and in, in, in such a way here. <coughs> So and and then uh, states like like in the Eisenberg picture, like all this uh, evolution is encoded in the operator and not in the not in the states in, in principle. Uh, in, yeah. So so here, like I like I was talking about box states before, and I was saying that they form a basis. So, which means that if you are interested in some some state of the theory in this Eisenberg picture and, and like typically some physical state, uh, whatever it means, uh, you you can in principle decompose it in in as a basis, uh, like yeah, under this basis of uh, of Hox states, 
like here, I, I mean implicitly for state that uh, with the creation and emission operator defined at x plus equals zero. And, and here, like the coefficient in this decomposition here would, uh, would be what we, what we call a light front wave function. Or equivalently, this is like the overlap of the state you, you want to study. So the overlap with a given Fox state. So basically that tell you like the content in terms of uh, elementary uh, partons, so here at scalar particles, which are within the state you want to, to study. So here like this uh, state, uh, I, I, I H in the horizontal pictures. Okay, for example, that might be a eigenstate of your of the Hamiltonian of your theory. And, and here, okay, like you would like to, to have this and, and um, okay, so, so then that will uh, tell you uh, a lot about the, the structure of your, I mean, yeah, so, so that will really, uh, uh, okay, yes. So for example, in, in, in QCD, if you consider that you want to study a hadron, here you, you would have like, that will tell you what, I mean, that's, so see that that will be a decomposition of your hadron in terms of uh, partons that will tell you the partonic content of your uh, of your hadron and, and so on. So that's the kind of object that uh, yeah. that we might consider in, when we want to to think of like for example parton distributions and, and so on or yeah. And, and then another, uh, so yeah, so basically here we would like uh, a way to calculate such uh, such overlap here. So calculate light front wave function and, and I will show you how to do that in, in perturbation theory. Uh, and then another quantity that uh, we would like to, to study is, okay, scattering. So for scattering, we, we have the S matrix elements. And here we have one given incoming state, which now typically, now it's not a one particle state anymore, but now it's really, uh, imagine you have uh, a state which consists of two, two incoming particles independent of each other. So that would not be a eigenstate of your, of your Hamiltonian. And then you have the final state, which is okay, any given final state. And now just the overlap of these two that would give you the so if these two are states in the in that picture that would, that would that would give you the the S matrix element associated with, to to scattering of these two incoming particles into into the final state F. Uh, okay, so now how to calculate uh, this light front wave function or or S matrix here. And, and here as, as usual in, in perturbation theory for, for QFT, we need to go away from the Eigenda picture and, and introduce the interaction picture. So it amounts to basically a, a slice, I mean, I'll, I'll split your um, Hamiltonian. So here's a P minus into a three parts that okay called T and the interaction part that we call uh, B. Uh, okay, so T would be really uh, yeah three parts so that would be the so that would be the, the P minus operator for three for three series. And now in the Eisenberg picture we have the same relation for the so, so now the okay now the operator in the interaction picture they have the X, X plus dependence, that's the evolution of an X plus, which is generated not by P, P minus, like the one from the Eisenberg picture, but only for only the, the free part here. So basically, the operator evolved according to the free evolution. So in the Eisenberg picture, all the evolution was, uh, was, was put in the operators, whereas now only the free part of the evolution is put in the operators. And instead, the, um, the states in the interaction picture now evolve, and they evolve according to the to the rest, which is the interaction part of the of this uh, 
P minus uh, Hamilton here. And actually, the, since the interaction in part of the, of the Hamiltonian here is itself uh, an operator, it evolves along X plus according to, to T, like, like this in such a way. So, no, okay, so that's, now we see in the interaction picture how things uh, evolve, like operators and, and uh, states. Yeah, so here actually, here there is P plus, which means that here you have several, uh, like when you expand the exponential, you would have several powers of this, of this uh, uh, operator, like this interaction operator. And here P plus means that uh, they will be ordered uh, according, so basically the, the V, uh, take like the interaction operator at larger x plus would be to the left and the one at uh, smaller x plus would be to the, to the right. Uh, okay. And, and, and just, okay, uh, as well, just by, by convention, we, we identify the, I mean, we, we can, up to choosing a, a overall phase, uh, which is uh, irrelevant, we can, match the two, two pictures, the Isenberg picture and the interaction picture, and, and tell that basically the, the operator and the two picture coincide at, uh, at x plus equal zero, and, and the states, like basically the, the state in the interaction picture at x plus equal zero is, uh, is the Isenberg state. So basically now, uh, thanks to, to, to this uh, evolution rule for the state in the interaction picture and, and this matching, now we see that the interaction, like the, a, a given state in the interact, in the as in that picture here can be written as uh, like the, like starting from some particular state in the interaction picture at, uh, at minus infinity and then this factor, which would uh, encode the, the evolution, like the due to the interaction in the theory, from x plus equal minus infinity to x plus equal zero. So okay, so this would encode the full uh, full evolution due to due to interaction here of the theory. Um, okay. So okay, so now I. I I told you a bit uh, how, okay, what is the uh, interaction picture and how, how things uh, look like in there, but, but still, I, I didn't say what would be the T and, and V operator. So here we can go back to our example of uh, phi to the four uh, scalar theory. And yeah, I had the, uh, I had, Okay, so it's a bit far. Okay, so I, I had here the, um, this uh, expression for the Hamiltonian density. So when I integrated over x plus and, and x minus, I, I would get the p minus. And now, okay, so I, I would like to take this quadratic terms here, like these two to be, uh, to form the, the free parts, so the, the operator T, and then the rest, okay, like this, so this is an interaction. So here I, since it depends on the coupling, I will also put it in the interaction part. So basically that's, uh, but okay. I mean, th there is some freedom in the splitting, but okay, as long as we put the interaction part in the, like the interaction terms in the interaction part is fine, then there is some, some freedom for the rest, but okay, so here that's why I, I have this operator T here, which contains these two, two terms, like the one with transverse derivative and the, mass, the term with the, the mass. And now if I plug the Fourier decomposition of the, of the field here at, uh, at some given x plus in terms of A and A dagger, I can evaluate that. And as previously, the term in, because of this integra integration of x minus, like the term in a a or a dagger a dagger will uh, will drop will, will be identically zero and I have only the a dagger a term 
in normal order because it was like written normal order already. And here the, the coefficient here is okay, we have just this. So uh, basically, okay, so this this operator T is just okay. Here there is um, a dagger A is um, when you act on a on a Fox state, for example, it would just select the the parton of uh, of momentum k plus k pop. So here, okay, you you have a summation over over this, yes, obviously. And so basically, for each uh, parton of uh, momentum k plus and k pop that you have in your Fox state that you act on, it will uh, just give you that. So basically, when you act on a, on a Fox state here, you will just get a term like this, k pop plus m square over 2k plus for each of the patterns that you have here. Okay, let me just give you the sum. And so this k pop uh, square plus m square over 2k plus is what would be the the k minus of your of your parton here of uh, momentum k plus and k plus and mass m if it was a uh, uh, part of a, a free theory so then that's kind of the estimate of the k minus in the case of a free theory except that here all, all what we have are our interacting field and, and so here so yeah, so this is a estimate of K minus in the, in the free theory. Okay, because we the K minus would depend on interaction in the free theory, so we don't uh, we don't know it. Okay. Uh, so here that's how this T act on on Fox space on Fox states. Uh, and now basically we can we are ready to. To look for the um, how, how to calculate the, for example the light front wave function so here I, I, if you remember i was saying that light front wave function was like which tell you what is the uh, content in terms of uh, of parton so what, what is the uh, like the overlap of the fox state with uh, the state you want to consider so that was the overlap of the fox state f with the state in the Eisenberg picture, but then the state in that picture, I wrote it in the interaction picture in, in such a way with here the full uh, evolution, and like, like the whole history of evolution from x plus equal minus infinity to zero with, with the action of this um, direction of the rate of here. And in terms of some, some, uh, some state in the interaction picture that uh, define that uh, x plus going to minus infinity. So now, if I want to do perturbation theory, somehow, as, as usual, since this one will be in like the state will be in the infinite past, at pertur in pertur perturbation theory, we at each order in perturbation theory, like this guy, we can consider it to be to be free. So that would be kind of free asymptotic state that you. Like similar to what uh, what you have seen in quantum field theory in, in other contexts. So, okay. So now basically the, the game is what to do with the uh, with this thing in the middle. So here we have a, an exponential, and so we can expand this uh, this exponential so that will be uh, we would have all this uh, we would have uh, multiple. Uh, Interaction operator uh, ordered along the x plus, and and for each uh, operator there will be a integration over this uh, coordinate x plus. Now, um, really, yeah. So here, uh, then you have to remember as well that the the evolution of this uh, interaction. Uh, Operator is, is given in such a way. So now we can we express all the interaction operator at zero at the price of having uh, exponentials of this uh, 
uh, free operator. But now if we introduce a summation of our Fox states, like, I, like if we introduce this, um, the composition of the identity here, what I was writing here, between each insertion of this, uh, between each power of this uh, um, interaction operator, <coughs> then we will have this guy which will act on Fox state. So we can just uh, replace this, this exponential of operator by, by exponential of, uh, of such, with, with such number here, because we, that's because of, yeah, the T Fox state are eigenstate of this uh, T, T operator. So by doing that, we will get a bunch of, uh, so basically all the X plus dependence will happen after that in, in terms of, uh, uh, in, in phases, which would be just numbers and we can, okay, it's a bit painful, but we can do all the, all the integrations along all the, all the X plus by basically using this uh, this relation, which is a tool in uh, in, in terms of uh, distribution theory here, because there is I, I epsilon here, and and the, the result is that all the like integration of all the x plus here would, would give uh, such kind of thing where here t of f uh, something is uh, eigenvalue of the of the operator on on the given Fox state basically. So again, now we have expanded uh, that in terms of uh, each uh, interactions. We have inserted uh, the composition of our Fox state between each uh, interactions and extracted the X plus dependence here. And after integration in such a way, we, we got these uh, denominators here, which basically now, if you look at them, so that will be the final Fox state here. Uh, and here as well, okay, here I also introduced uh, F0 here, which was just like Fox state decomposition of this uh, guy that we, we start from, that's our, so it's basically the decomposition of this um, asymptotic, uh, like free asymptotic state in the, in the past here. So, because here this guy was not necessarily an eigenstate of uh, of t, so I just decompose it into a composite sort of state here. So now, for each um, for each uh, okay, like between each uh, interaction, like there is. Um, so, okay, there is such a denominator here where we have the difference between the, like this kind of uh, thing you calculated from the, from the very start, like in the infinite past, like this T0, T of zero, and the such kind of sum that you calculate uh, for the, for this intermediate fork state you are, you are looking at. And there is as well one for the for f for the final Fox state you are, you are considering here. So okay, so this is a full uh, light front perturbation theory uh, expansion of uh, of light front wave functions. So we I define what are these energy limiters here. They are given by this uh, such kind of eigenvalues here, the difference of that. And uh, and here we just have to to look at what are such uh, uh, like a matrix element of this uh, interaction operator between two two fox two fox states, and then the whole whole thing is uh, specified. And then okay, I mean it's just a matter of calculation, but okay, of course it's, it can be lead to very nasty and complicated calculations. And and okay, I mean it's a full perturbation theory, so. Um, okay, and yeah, okay. So there is just a detail that okay, okay. I, I don't want to talk about this. Maybe. Um, 
Okay, I, I was also telling about S matrix elements between an uh, incoming and outgoing uh, state, but now, now that will be the same, except that now we start from a asymptotic state at x plus equal minus infinity, and we end up with another one at x plus going to plus infinity. And now this uh, exponential, instead of being from minus infinity to zero, is from minus infinity to plus infinity. So it's exactly the same story as before, except that there will be, like we will still have the x plus integration, which will be uh, ordered. So most of them will still be, uh, because they will be ordered, most of them will still, uh, you can still do them using such like this relation and get some energy denominator again. But then there will be a one overall integration, uh, which will go from minus infinity to, to plus infinity, where instead, okay, basically that will be the analog of, uh, like if you, if here you go from minus infinity to plus infinity, instead what you get is, uh, is two pi uh, delta, I mean, uh, like Dirac delta evaluated at, at, at this big delta here. So, so here instead there is this, uh, okay, here there is, there is one less energy denominator here basically, and instead there is such kind of uh, uh, delta here. And now instead that means that um, uh, in here you have uh, this delta function which enforce somehow, uh, so equivalently like this, this was related to the minus uh, component of the, of the momentum. So that, that would be basically that now uh, minus momentum is, uh, is concert between the asymptotic initial state to the final uh, asymptotic state. Uh, and okay, so, so it's concerned only overall, but not uh, step by step in each, uh, in each uh, uh, in, in, at, at each uh, interaction. So, okay, just to, to finish here, like in the case of pi to the four series, so we, we like, like the thing we have to stitch to specify are, are such kind of uh, um, overlap of uh, like like matrix element of uh, of the interaction operator between four states. So here, like what we had in the interaction operator was this uh, five to the four term, but normal ordered, and then there was also this extra extra piece. So now, if I Want to, to to look at the overlap? I mean, like the like the matrix element between, for example, one incoming scalar and and then going to three scalar. Okay, I will have only this uh, because of the normal ordering. I will have only this uh, this guy contributing here, and I will. Uh, okay, and basically if each of the um, for each of the phi. In, inside the inside the operator, inside the interaction term here, I will uh, I will pick the I mean I, I will pick a commutator with either a or a dagger here and get the phase <coughs> and so basically here we, if we calculate this what you will get is just a, a product of four such phases. So one for the a dagger with a minus sign and, and three for the for the a, so with, with plus sign here. And since there are like uh, factorial four ways to, to associate like the, the four fields to, to this uh, for a or a dagger operators that will be another factorial four which will cancel this denominator. And then all, for all the phases when you integrate over the X minus and X perp, you will get this uh, three dimensional delta function back like here along the plus and perp direction. So, okay, so that's how uh, um, basically such kind of light front vertex appearing in the, in the perturbative expansion like this would look like. Yes. So, here that would be uh, one scalar uh, going to, to three with. Uh, via uh, the four scalar interaction vertex. So you have this delta function telling that plus and per momentum is conserved at, at this vertex. 
and you have the, the coupling here. Okay, so this one is very simple. And again, you see that there is no minus momentum uh, conservation at this vertex. Uh, and instead, for example, for the S matrix, uh, because of this, like the kind of minus momentum is conserved only globally, but not, uh, not at each vertex. And instead, the uh, deviation to, to minus momentum conservation is somehow encoded in the, uh, by the energy generators here. <coughs> so similarly, you have the same thing going on for the three to one uh, scalar vertex, which is very similar. So it's basically the same calculation. You get this. Now, if you want two to two, you have also uh, another, you can also consider that. So again, from this uh, five to the four normal order, then and you, and you pick again. Uh, so again, that's very similar. You get again coupling and then some momentum conservation uh, delta function. So with the appropriate uh, sign that you could uh, could think of, since it's two incoming to our so two plus two minuses. Uh, so this is basically the the whole content of these three vertices, like one to three, three to one, and two to two. That's basically the only content that you that you have from this part of the interaction Hamiltonian. Um, but then, okay, like there is what what happened to this guy. So here again, it's uh, since it's both normal order and int and integrated over x minus and x plus, there will be only one contribution which is equivalent is effectively a, a dagger a type of term here. So the only only thing it can contribute to is a kind of one to one vertex. So it's just a kind of insertion of uh, on a on a on a scalar line if you want. So you have an incoming scalar, you have this insertion and then you continue. And basically it just gives you this uh, this, uh, this this vacuum expectation value here that, that was in, in 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 here and okay so that if you insert the Fourier expansion of the of the field here you you can try to rewrite it and okay anyway so this would be independent of x so because of that like the phase here like the integration will just be used uh, again conservation so the incoming scalar and the outgoing scalar will have the same uh, plus and plus momentum you have this coupling and then you have like this this guy which could give you some factor which okay you can write it like this and and this would be a if you think about it this is a divergent uh, tadpole integral so it's a one loop so basically here you take a scalar and you just uh, insert uh, you just insert a, a tadpole integral here. So so that typically uh, in most calculation it will not uh, not contribute like it will only contribute in if you are interested in in mass renormalization. So this would be a, a contribution to the renormalization of the mass of the, of the scalar. And okay, it's a bit uh, again it's kind of. Uh, a bit tricky to, to evaluate due to the pattern of divergence, so you have to be careful with that. And I will not go into, into more detail, but just to bear in mind that, okay, in principle, you have such kind of term and, and they can contribute to the normalization of the mass. And basically for the for the five to the four scalar, that's, that's it. I mean, you have only this, this interaction terms. And then you can you can plug them here either in the expansion of the S matrix or in the or in the expansion of your light front wave function here. And one thing also to keep in mind is that here in principle you might have a diagram where in some intermediate state like between two interactions you have Okay, many, you can have many, uh, many intermediate uh, scalars here in your fourth state, more than, uh, more than the one uh, we have here. Uh, like 
because here it was only one, two, three, three to one, two to two, okay, and, and one to one. So if you have more, um, like if you have a fox state, if you have folks, when you have fox states in, in, in here, which is larger than that, then it just means that one A dagger, which is present in this fox state, will not uh, talk at all to the interaction term and will uh, basically annihilate the A, which is present in this of conjugate, for example. Um, so that will be basically a, a, a parton which is spectator with respect to this vertex. So in the end, you can rewrite that by, okay, eliminate spectator and, and only have um, vertices which involve the, the partons with, uh, which, uh, which participate to, which connect to this vertex here. But then you still remember to, you still need to remember how many partons you, you had uh, in this intermediate state, because in here in the energy dominator, in here, you cannot uh, remove them yet, they, they will contribute. So, so okay, practical calculation, that's something to, to keep in mind here. Okay, so I think we are done for today. Any questions? Also from the Zoom. Okay, I have put uh, also these slides in the, in the second lecture. Uh, they are exactly the same as in the first lecture. So I have duplicated gas for people to click there and not to look back. Okay. So, We will continue tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, no.